Well, gosh, once again, thanks to everybody for coming out. I promise by next year we're going to try to make this like four rows deeper and have more inside space and all. But uh, y'all flatter us tremendously with the uh, number of folks that come out. How many of y'all's first time for one of our seminars? Okay, how many of y'all first time in the nursery? Okay, well, welcome, guys. As I usually do, I'll start off by telling you about the game we play. We've got a big crowd here, and you probably may not want to admit some of the things that have gone on in your own yard or your own garden. So what we do is you stick up your hand and you say, I have a neighbor who couldn't come, who couldn't get in, and they wanted me to ask you this question. And we'll all know what the situation is, but at least it, it takes a little of the pressure off of you. Topic this morning is obviously vegetables. I'm going to tell you uh, a few of the things that I do. I grow up pretty good garden, a pretty big garden. Uh, yeah, my, my garden's bigger than some people's yards, and uh, you can ask the employees around here how much they benefit from it. But I think I've made every mistake you can make in the garden over the years, so I'll try to keep you from making some of the same ones. I do have a friend who defines an expert as a person who has killed at least a thousand plants. I admit to qualifying for that, but maybe I can maybe I can save you all a few of the problems. Um, if you have questions as we go along, stick up your hand. If it's something that's appropriate, I'll stop and answer then. If it's something I'm going to cover in a little while, I'll put you off for a couple of minutes. But uh, the whole idea of this is to answer your questions and to help you be even more successful in your gardening without having to be just a slave. To them. And uh, it's I guess the thing I always want to start out with is tomato plants, because if there's one thing that everybody wants to grow, and not all that many people grow well, it's tomato plants. And so we'll start off with that. We'll talk about peppers and eggplants. There's some secrets about growing beans and peas. There's some things I found about growing squash and a number of things about controlling insects in the garden. But tomatoes first of all, but just a couple of general comments first of all. If you want to grow vegetables successfully, you have to have sun. If you don't have sun, you have two choices. There's a product known as chainsaw. You apply it close to ground level and you get more sun. Or you move, or you buy the lot next door, or whatever. But if you are limited on sun, you're going to have difficulty getting a lot of produce. And probably the single most common problem I hear from people is just, I don't get much fruit or it doesn't amount to a whole a lot, and almost always it's a question of not enough sun. How much sun is enough sun? Well, there's no such thing as too much. If your garden gets sun from the time the sun comes up in the morning until the time it goes down in the afternoon, that's the amount of sun that you really want to have on your vegetable garden. Can you garden in containers? Yes, you can garden in big containers. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, you know, the idea of growing things in little bitty pots is a joke. There's no bigger joke in the world than these pictures you see in the magazine of these little bitty herbs sitting up on the windowsill. They don't stay that size. It may make a good picture. But, uh, and, and you can grow. There are some tomatoes, for instance, you can grow in tiny little pots. There's one called Tiny Tim. Produces a little tomato about the size of a pea. Come on in. And uh, doesn't produce a whole lot of them. I think that if you're going to grow stuff, you should grow it well. To my, me, the idea of a good tomato is one that produces about 40 pounds of fruit. So, you know, I'm, I want to tell you the very best ways to grow things. And uh, just forget every, anything you ever learned from Jerry Parsons. But, uh, no. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but anyway, I grow a better garden than Jerry does. Uh, and I think even people admit that. But anyway, I just, I'm going to tell you some things that I've learned about growing things. And especially with tomatoes, too much sun is just enough. Now, how many brave souls out there have already planted tomatoes? This year. Wow. I'm amazed. I thought I was the one that was jumping the gun. Um, you know, the, the question about when to plant tomatoes, you obviously want to plant after the last hard freeze. Years ago, I worked with a wonderful gentleman up in Bernie named Alton Grimm, and people would come in and they'd say, Mr. Grimm, when's it going to freeze? And he'd look him in the eye and say, when it gets to 32 degrees. And I don't know whether it's going to freeze again or not. I asked you guys to put some insulate out here. Yeah, here it is. 
I have already planted some tomatoes in my own garden, and I live in the hill country. I don't know whether that's being brave or whether that's being stupid, but it kind of relates to, and many of y'all probably heard of one of my favorite stories about the much older man marrying the much younger woman. And uh, one of his friends asked him, said, well, do you consider the, the medical implications, the strain on the heart, the stress? And the old fellow says, hey, if she dies, she dies. <laughs> That's the way I feel about those tomato plants. If they freeze, they freeze. And if they freeze, I'm going to plant some more. But I planted, what, 48 tomatoes in my own garden the other day. But I'll tell you what I do if you're, gonna, if you're going to uh, plant early. I use this stuff called insulate. And this is one of the most wonderful materials for protecting plants. Now, if you're patient, if you're not out to have the earliest and best tomatoes, wait three or four weeks before you plant, and you'll probably be pretty safe. Latest freeze I ever remember in San Antonio was uh, April 3rd. So we're not out of the woods yet. But again, tomato plants aren't all that expensive. If you plant them, if some of them freeze, you can always replace them. I happen to have a pretty good source if any of mine freeze, and uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But first things first about tomatoes. Uh, there are basically three sizes of tomato plant. And within all three of those sizes, you can get little fruits, you can get medium-sized fruits, you can get great big fruit. But one thing that's important is to know how big your tomatoes are going to grow, how big the plants are going to grow. You're going to hear three terms. You're going to hear determinate, semi-determinate, and indeterminate. Um, I don't like words that are that big, so I say little bushes, big bushes, and vines. That's basically what those three correspond to. A determinate tomato grows up to about this tall and it stops growing and it produces a given amount of fruit. A semi-determinate tomato, I guess a good variety or a good uh, example of determinate would be this one Parsons was producing last or pushing last year or year before called the, the 444. 444 makes a great wonderful big tomato. The plants make about 10 tomatoes and that's it for the season. Sure I'll plant a few of them because they're a big slicing tomato but I want again plants that produce lots of fruit. Semi-determinate varieties are ones that grow a little bit taller and continue to produce over a longer period of time. My favorite of the semi-determinates happens to be Celebrity. I think Celebrity is probably the biggest, most productive of the fairly, they're medium size. I mean, anybody's ever seen a really big tomato, that's like a two-pound tomato. But most of us consider a nice big slicing tomato is going to be something like Celebrity. Are they sweet? Yes, if you feed them properly. Okay. They're sweet. Uh, just ask any bird. You know, 10,000 mockingbirds can't be wrong. Uh, that's what happens in my garden. But, uh, and then the so-called indeterminate tomatoes are basically big vines. They just keep growing and growing and growing and growing, and unless they freeze, they'll grow almost indefinitely. I had a fellow was talking about driving on the big island of Hawaii, and seeing a tomato growing wild by the side of the road, and he, I don't know whether he walked it or he drove it, but he, he looked at this tomato plant very carefully, and he figured one tomato plant was two miles long. You know, a, a indeterminate tomato, and we're talking here about Sweet 100s and some of those, they're just basically big vines, and they're going to grow as long as you let them grow. When I first started growing tomatoes, you know, if you, well, not when I first started growing them, but when I first started having my own garden, I guess back in my college days, I had a fun thing that would happen. I was growing them in cages, and I'll tell you about cages in just a minute, but I always used big wire, you know, five, six foot wire to make my tomato cages, and my friends would say, why are you growing or making such a big cage? Because their never, tomatoes never got over about this big. And I'd say, well, my tomatoes are going to grow up and out the top of this cage. And they'd say, no, they're not. And my response was always, want to make a bet. <laughs> Usually the bet was a bottle of wine, and uh, I guess I got hooked on wine back in my college days because I never lost. But anyway, uh, know how big your tomatoes are going to grow and you know, choose the appropriate 